Good morning, Centerpoint Church. I'm so happy that you decided to join us for online service today. It's gonna be a great day. Couple things. The first one is there's a lot of stuff that's always happening here at Centerpoint Church, and we've made it really, really convenient for you to be able to know everything, register for everything, and be able to attend anything and everything that you want to. The first way is to go to the church website, and you can click on the events tab, and it will tell you everything that's happening. The second way is to download our church app, and the same thing, click the events tab, very easy. You can click on any event. It'll tell you all the information about it. And then you can click register right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, no problems. The other thing I wanted to remind you of was we have Facebook and we have Instagram and we are always posting on that. Different events, pictures from the events, uh, different things that are coming up. So please follow us. Please stay connected with us. We want to be able to, to talk to you. We want to be able to, to share the different moments that are going on, especially in this time where we can't always be together all the time. So I hope you guys are having a great week. I hope you are ready. I want you to prepare your hearts right now because the word is going to be good today. It's going to be a fantastic day. Let's get to the word. Good morning, church. Welcome to all of you that are online today that have joined us on the Sunday morning, I hope you're doing well. I just want to say to all of you that maybe have not yet had the opportunity to return uh, back to church in the live setting, I just want to say to you today that we love you, we miss you, we've been praying for you and hope you're doing fantastic. And we're believing that in the next few weeks, we will all be able to come back together Amen, as a church as a whole, and worship God. Amen. I want to get into the Word today, just share my heart, some things I believe that will encourage you, help you, today and now, where you are at in your life today. I know many of us maybe are at different places in life, but God is still in control, and His Word is still truth, and I believe it can help you, it can set you free Amen, and give you victory for this coming week. But before we dive into the word, let's open up in prayer today. Father, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity, God, just to open up my heart, Lord, and to share your word, Lord, with everyone that's viewing today. Lord, I just pray blessing upon every household, no matter where they're at, Lord, whether they're at in their homes, Lord, or whether they're on vacation, Lord, or whether they're God, in, in bed today, and they might even be sick, Lord. I just pray that you touch them, God, that you heal them, that you encourage them, Lord, that you lift them up through the spoken word today. We thank you, Jesus, for this day. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, let's dive right into the word today. If you'd open up your Bibles wherever you're at, open up your Bibles or your iPads, get them out, get your pen and paper. And let's get right into the word today. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45, 1 Samuel 17, 45, you can read about the story of David through these passages, but I want to take this one caption, this one area, and teach on it today. One thing I want to say today as I open up is David had the spirit and the heart of God. And I believe today you can have the same. But let's get into the word. It said, David said to the Philistines, You came against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you, or I come against you, in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of all armies of Israel, whom you have defied. I come against you in the name of the Lord. I want to remind you today in your circumstance, in your situation, that there is power in the name of the Lord. Wherever you're at today, you can call out in the name of the Lord and he will hear you. When you read the story of David and you read these passages, you begin to realize and understand that David had the spirit of God within him. He had his heart. There's a song that I love the lyrics, and the lyrics say this. At the end of the day, all I want people to say that my heart looks like your heart. Wow. I pray that that is your prayer, that your heart, that my heart would look like 
his heart. The Spirit of God or the heart of God is not just some weak, fearful, passive thing. I want you to, to hear me today that the Spirit of God or the heart of God isn't just some passive or just some, some weak, fearful thing. Jesus had to face adversity himself, even in his own life. You think about the things that Jesus went through and the diversity and the things that he had to face. Amen. And he had the Spirit of God, amen, in his heart. And I want to say to you today that the same Spirit of God lives inside of you and I. Can you grasp that today? Can you get that today? That the same Spirit that took Jesus through his adversity, that came alongside David, the same Spirit, the heart of God, lives today inside of you. You and I may not be standing across the valley facing a big, ugly, Philistine giant or the army of the Philistines, but there's things in your life that you may be facing today. It could be fear, it could be depression, anger, poor self-esteem, doubt, guilt, shame, addictions, anxiety, unforgiveness, jealousy, maybe a negative attitude, honesty, greed. To bring down those areas in your life or to bring down, like David, the Goliath in your life, today I want to give you three simple things. No matter what you're facing today, some of those things that I just read out and I just spoke out to you today, maybe you're dealing with today because of all that's going on in life today. I want to remind you that the same spirit that was with Jesus through his adversity is in you today or can be in you today. That same heart that will help you, amen, just like David that was able to empower him, help him to face the adversity or the giant of that day. Three things that I want to give you that you must do. Number one, you must stand up to him. You must stand up to that adversity. You must stand up and confront the thing that is facing you eye to eye. Just like David did, he had to stand up. You can't just play games. You can't just play rock, paper, scissors and think everything's going to be all right. You can't play hide and seek with the enemy. You don't live in denial and pretend nothing is there or try to ignore it, or try to just cover it up, or just look the other way. It will not solve the issue. I'm saying to you today that you must stand up to the, the, to the depression, to the fear, to the guilt, to the anger. Whatever it is in your life, you must stand up to Him. I remember as a young kid, when I was in school, I only had one fight in my lifetime in school. I was the one that always tried to make peace and bring peace, but there was this bully in the school one time that was confronting a friend of mine that was much smaller in stature, and it got to the point that I could not take it anymore, and I had to stand up. I had to confront the situation. I want to say to you today that any problem you try to excuse or escape in your life, you empower. Hear me out today. The things that you make excuses for or the things that you just try to put aside or maybe that you don't deal with, you're unwilling to stand up against, that very thing is what you're empowering in your life today. You will not defeat the enemy by coming up with excuses. You will not overcome the anxiety and the fears, the poor self-esteem, these different areas that I talked about today or the fear in your life by coming up with excuses or just trying to escape it. After listening to Goliath's threats, 
every day. Fear gripped the hearts. When you read the scripture, fear gripped the hearts of the Israelites, of God's people, and they could not stand up to the enemy. They could not stand up to the giant. But however, David attacked. I want you to say that word out loud right where you are. He attacked his fear and did not let it rule him. He did not let it dictate the situation. He attacked the fear. He stood up to the giant. Fear and doubt are only a feeling and we don't have to let them rule your lives another second, another minute, another day, another month, another year. Today, hear me out today. Someone needs to hear this today. You can operate in the truth of God and his word. Even when it appears, even when it appears and you look all around us of all the things that are happening around us and they seem to be screaming something different. How true that is today. Something totally different. But when you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus today, not what's happening necessarily around you. Yes, we're aware, but we don't keep our eyes fixed on just the things that are around us. But whatever you fear, here's the deal. Whatever you fear will be your master. What is it today that you're fearing in your life? If you're not careful, it'll become your master of your life. The size of your enemy determines the size of your reward. You must stand up to your Goliath. You must stand up to the situation that you're dealing with today if you want to defeat it and see victory and have the spirit and the heart of God. Here's my second point. You must remember and what David did. You must remember what God has already done for you. You may be in a place where, yeah, there may be struggle or whatever, but you can pause and remember the, some good things that God has done in your life to encourage you, to lift you up, to empower you, just like David did. David recalled his victories over the lion, the bear. And guess what? You and I must do the same thing today and now because it will encourage you. It will empower you. It will embolden you, amen, to have victory in your life. Jeremiah says this, Lamentations 3, 21 and 23. It says, yet this I call to mind. Yet this I call to mind. And therefore I have hope because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The strength to deal with today's struggles in our life today come from remembering how God helped you solve yesterday's struggles. Don't ignore those. Reach back. Take a hold of those. Let those build your faith to face, to confront the circumstances that you're dealing with today in your life, just like David did. Here's my last point. You must cut off the giant's head. When we read in 1 Samuel 17, 51 about David, David ran and stood over him after he threw the rock. He ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from his sheath after he killed him and cut off the head with the sword. Cut off his head with the sword. When the Philistines saw that the hero was dead, that their hero, the big giant, was dead, what happened? They turned and run. 
You need to know your enemy understands his tactics and be willing to fight with the same level and intensity as he does. Let me remind you that Jesus is with you. He is greater than any obstacle, any enemy that you're facing today. He has already won. He has already given you the victory. Today, I want you to embrace and to have the heart and the soul of God. And that, that will empower you to stand up and to face your circumstance. Amen. In your life today, you've got to take what you learn and apply it to his weak areas and never assume he's dead. I'm talking about the enemy today when he's just dazed. Some people say, well, I, you know, I took care of it. But the reality of it is he was just dazed. If you don't cut off his head, he'll still sneak up on you on another day. Don't just daze the enemy. Don't just passively deal with the circumstance maybe that you're going through. You may not be dealing again, like I said, with a physical giant, but some of these things that I read to you earlier in your life. Don't just treat it passively. Go for a permanent solution, not just a short-term fix. God can give you the victory right now, today, over the situation that you've been dealing with and you can cut off the head of it right now and never deal with it again. That's the kind of God that we serve. He's for you and he's with you. Let me ask you this question today. Do you want total victory in your life? I don't know about you, but I do. I want total victory over the enemy, over depression, fear, anger, all these things that are going on in life today, I want total victory in my life. And I know you do too. You need to decide. You need to make a decision today or right now if you are satisfied with surviving or you want total victory. What do you want in your life today? You can just go on and just kind of survive and kind of deal with with maybe some of the issues that you're dealing with day in and day out, or you can choose like David and defeat the enemy and have complete and total victory in your life today and right now. How do we do it? Fortify yourself with prayer today. Renew your mind with the word of God. Above all, remember your strength doesn't lie in yourself, but our strength lies in only God. With Him on your side today, He is for you, He is with you, and with Him, I promise you, you win every, every time. I encourage you to open up your heart. Amen? Let Him be a part of your life in this day, in this time. With him on your side, you'll have victory every time. David went into battle without a sword, but he came out with one. The very thing that was meant to destroy him, the very thing that was meant to destroy you, the enemy's trying to destroy you, will be the thing that gives you the victory today. Think about it. You must stand up to him right there in your living room, right there in your home, and wherever you're at watching today. I want you to just look internally today and those things, those areas, maybe that have been a challenge, maybe that you've been fighting. I want you to stand up today and face him. You must remember what God has already done for you. God is a good God. There's many things that he's already done and you can embrace those. Let those empower you to remind you, to, cause, to help get you back up and to be able to face the enemy. And once you do, you must cut off the head of the problem. You must cut off the head of the giant so that it never 
ever again. That you ever have to deal with it again. That's God's promise. He's with you, just like he was for David. He is with you today. He's ready. He's ready to go to battle with you. He is for us. Amen? And with God, we can do all things. And with God, we can win. Father, Lord, I just thank you for your word today. Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, wherever people are at, whatever that they're facing, God, that they will take on the attributes like David, O oh Lord. Just as Jesus faced adversity, God, I just pray, O oh Lord, God, that same power is within each and every one of us. God, we want to embrace your heart and your spirit so that we can walk out every day of our life in victory with you, just like David did, Lord. I just pray over anybody, God, that maybe does not have a relationship with you, that right now they'd ask forgiveness of all their sins and invite you into their hearts, into their lives. From this day forward, they're committed to love you, to serve you the rest of their days. Father, we thank you for victory. God, I thank you for the praise reports and the victories, God, that we will hear. God, just like David did, Lord, he was able to conquer and defeat his enemy. Amen? Because of the power, the spirit, the heart of God that was within him. Lord, and I believe that for everyone that's listening today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you right now just to open your hearts up. Amen. For a moment of worship as the team comes and just lead us into the presence of God right where you're at today as you worship. Just let this word speak to your spirit. Amen. And bring breakthrough to the areas of your life today. He's a good God. Let's worship him together right now. Not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. Working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out working all things out yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name Nothing can stand against and got you 
for being with us today on this online service. If you have a prayer request, if you have a praise report, I just want to encourage you to go to our website or drop a comment and let us know. As well, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, you can go online and support us. Have an incredible week. Know that God loves you and we will see you next Sunday.